the meanings of words can drift over time. As the generations pass, the speakers who were used to an earlier meaning are gone, and the younger speakers would have no memory of what words originally meant. Uh, and one word that illustrates this very nicely uh, is the word noon. So noon, of course, meaning the middle of the day. Uh, we think of it as 12 o'clock. But this word noon comes from the word nine. Now, it's not immediately clear how to connect the number nine with noon. Now, of course, we connect it with the number 12, and that's counting from midnight. I guess you got to start at 12, uh, avoiding the number zero, which the ancients uh, tended to avoid, and so instead we're starting with 12, and then you, know, you, you count up from midnight to noon, and then you start again. So noon is 12. But it was popular in the ancient world um, to count from sunrise. Um, so you know, typically uh, 12 hours from sunrise to sunset and then 12 hours from sunset to sunrise. So the middle of the day uh, would be half of 12, it would be six. So noon would be six. That would be that would make sense. So we think of noon as 12. In the older system, starting from sunrise, uh, it should be six. But how did it get to nine? Well, you we can look at the number nine. This number goes back all the way to Proto-Indo-European root, uh, something like noun, meaning nine. So it's really quite remarkable how this particular word, it almost uh, it sounds the same as it did even in this ancient root down all the way to the root of Proto-Indo-European um, through all the changes, all the different languages still comes to us with something very similar, known, noon or nine, uh, still the same. And we see there Latin novem, Greek ennia. Uh, these are remaining uh, very similar. So, so clearly noon is nine. And uh, if we call it six, then it would be sex. So here we, if we look at the, the uh, hours of the day that were common in the medieval period. Um, there were these hours for monastic services or prayers that were held regularly throughout the day. And uh, so they would start with prime of course, prime meaning first for the first hour, and then they would have the third hour. So again, avoiding zero, because they want, instead of going zero, three, six, they go one, three, six, prime, three, and six. But then, so you have your mid-morning terce, that would be like around 9 a.m. Uh, for the third hour, and then sext would be noon. So it seems to make sense that, you know, it would, you, you would have an, uh, a perfectly reasonable case to refer to noon as sext. Uh, it might lead to some confusion uh, as the word sext uh, has very recently become a word with a completely different meaning, uh, but you would have a case to make for why you are saying meet me at sext. Okay, but meanings change and logic cannot uh, resist the change in meaning that happens. Uh, no matter how logical it might be to call noon sext, that is not what the language does. So here we have nons for nine. And somehow nons drifted so that what used to be the ninth hour of the day around 3 p.m. drifted to become the sixth hour of the day or 12 p.m. or noon. And so this seems to be very clear. The etymology is rock solid on this. Uh, clearly noon comes from nones or nine. Um, it, it, this is almost certainly the case. But when it comes to why this drift happened, how and why uh, there was this three hour shift in the meaning of uh, this word, that is completely uh, unknown. The mystery remains and there's only a few theories. Um, so we see 
this uh, possible theory. Uh, some people say unreliable timekeeping. They just didn't know what time it was. They were confused. You know, they thought it was not. It was thought it was noon. It was you know they, they thought it was 3 p.m. It was really 12. So they said it was noon, and they meant 3 p.m. But it was 12 p.m. And then and then you know they they just couldn't they couldn't keep track of time. I have a hard time believing that. They were pretty good at keeping basic time. They didn't have exact to the second timekeeping, but uh, certainly they knew how to count uh, the passing of the day. Um, so that seems a bit of a stretch. Seasonal elasticity of the hours. Well, certainly true that the whole idea of what time, uh, you know, how many hours past sunrise does it take for you to get to noon? That's certainly going to be changing in the midsummer in the uh, far north you, know, you may be it may be around noon by the time you're nine hours into your day uh, for for very far north and if you're in the middle of winter uh, for most of Europe it would already be uh, sunset nine hours in but in the older times uh, it was common to uh, count hours according to the division of the day so that there would always be 12 hours from sunrise to sun, uh, sunset and 12 hours from sunset to sunrise. That was a common system so that the hours would actually stretch and squeeze in the different systems. Um, but certainly it, it's reasonable to think that there might be some confusion brought in and they, they, they had trouble finding noon. Yeah, but still I see that kind of similar to this first uh, theory that it just seems to suggest they didn't know how to keep track of time. I see it seems hard to believe. Uh, here's a fun theory uh, that there it was common uh, in, in many uh, of these rules and traditions that you had to fast until noon. You had to fast until the hour of noon. Uh, so you know if you have to wait until 3 p.m. to have your meal uh, certainly is an incentive for 3 p.m. to hurry up and so you might be thinking eh, you know uh, I'm pretty sure it's noon by now uh, I'm pretty sure that I know it seems a little bit early but yeah I think we can just call this noon okay so there is a and you can just imagine that process sort of creeping up uh, so that you would be you know eventually uh, you'd, or you'd be three hours earlier and you're like yep I'm sure it's noon right now ready to eat um, and here's another possibility was that it was the idea that at some point it was common to have your you know for ordinary people not not just monasteries but it, it was common to have your midday meal around 3 p.m. Now I have no idea if this is true but if this is true this would make a plausible explanation that it was common to eat your meal around uh, 3 p.m., uh, the hour of nones or noon, and so the time was became associated with the meal. You just say, okay, this is noon, this is the meal. But then as that meal tended to be eaten earlier and tended to creep towards noon, the name noon also crept up in association with the, that meal. So that's also plausible, but it does depend on uh, whether it's actually true that there is this mealtime shift, which uh, I would need to see some evidence of that. So none of these theories are really very convincing, but somehow there was a drift, and the drift seems to have been complete by the middle of the Middle Ages. And as a fun little footnote to this, there was a time from the 17th to 19th century where Noon could be used to refer to midnight, the noon of the night. Uh, I'm not sure if that sounds poetic or silly, uh, which one is stronger for that. But these are the kinds of things that uh, you can open up when you step into the etymology of any word. It opens up uh, a whole world of history and mystery.